there were four black emperors of Rome. If you visit the London go into the British Museum, Roman section, at the entrance of the British Museum the Roman section, there are two African emperors of Rome, Septimus Severus, governor of England and emperor of Rome, and his son Caracalla. Caracalla, you can see the name from here. <laughs> African emperors of Rome. Septimus Severus became an emperor of Rome at the time when another great African immortal known as Augustine of Hipporegius, who spent most of his time in Paris, but when he didn't, he wrote a very good philosophy for the Catholic Church because he's the one who writes the canon for the Catholic Church. Augustine of Hipporegius, another African uh, who, is named, who was uh, Pope St. Victor, introduces Latin as the official language. But there was, a, there was another emperor of Rome called Basinius. The black, Pasinia's leader. Now, inside the British Museum, at the entrance, that's why you see the African Empress of Rome. Emperor of Rome. Now, at the time, what was called ancient Egypt extended up to this lake. I had the, the uh, vice president talk about when you are in Uganda, that when you are in, in, in Uganda, uh, I've mentioned some of the attributes of Uganda, but this is UNESCO's book, Volume 2 of UNESCO, which rewrote the history of Africa after 1974, when a Senegalese scholar named Sheikh Antonio, when uh, UNESCO brought all the scholars of the world together to argue what color were the ancient Egyptians and what were the first people to populate the world. And if you read UNESCO proceedings, it says the only two people who came prepared for the conference were Tia Ferrobena from Congo and Sheikh Andadio, who presented evidence that was hard to list. As a result of that, UNESCO rewrote the history of Africa. And this is one of the books, the abridged version, the general history of Africa, volume two. And inside volume two, chapter one, it says, as a result of the work of Professor Lique and other subsequent work, it leads us to conclude that more than 150,000 years ago, beings morphologically identical with the man of today were living in the area of the Great Lakes, at the foothills of the mountains of the moon, at the source of the Nile, and nowhere else. In UNESCO, United Nations, this is the UN. It says, case closed, humanity was born here at the foothills of the mountains of the moon, at the source of the night. So what I am asking is, I told you we are all investigators, is why don't we have a shrine of humanity? So that we would be telling people, oh, and you see, even I can give you the world, the first man was my grandfather, lived around that area, and he looked like me. <laughs> now, after UNESCO, scientists stand, stand up and say, oh, 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 uh, okay, we know we have seen fossils, we know, but can we use scientific method? So in 1984, Emory University, Rebecca Khan and Stone King, they took the embryos of 40, 400 women, ethnic women from all around the world. And they were looking for what they call mitochondria DNA. You know, when a, a, a man meets with a woman, you know, when they have in Europe they say when they have sex in Africa, we don't say sex, we say spiritual congress. You know. <laughs> when a man has a spiritual congress with a woman, you exchange genes and you have what they call nuclear DNA. And you have you know, a, 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 a man completely almost the same as the woman. You know, and it sits on your chromosome. But if the woman, our women being wiser than most of us, you know, because the word woman means what? Womb of a man. Woman. No. So it means you come from a woman. So she has a gene that she passes through the, uh, to the child without going through the filtration process. That is called the mitochondria DNA. So they were looking at the mitochondria DNA to find out who is the mother of us all. And if, if you pick Newsweek of 11th May 1987, you will see a picture of a black man and a black woman holding an apple and it is entitled the African Eve. And they proved by scientific method that according to molecular biology, the first woman to, go, to populate the world, the African Eve, was from where you are standing on this holy ground in Uganda, or the country that the British called Uganda in 1894.